Hey guys, Jay here with Word of Advice TV on my how to fix your AC video. The most frequently asked question on there, or one of the most frequently asked, is my contactor is not pulling in, what could be causing that? But before I get into the 10 reasons why this could be happening, let's just quickly go over to contactor and how it works. So right here we got our disconnect. This is where your 240 volts comes from. Your circuit breaker panel is hooked up straight to this thing. It gets two hot legs from here, two 120 legs to get you 240. And that goes right into your AC unit through this whip. And this whip will typically have three wires inside of it, two hot legs on the ground. And as you can see, that goes straight up into my unit. And also, there's a thermostat wire. A lot of times it'll come from the disconnect. Sometimes it'll come out with the refrigerant pipes. Once in a while, it'll come out of the wall. But that is also routed straight to your AC condenser unit. So right here, we got two hot legs coming in. And I'll just show you quick with my meter. The two hot legs, they come in straight from the disconnect and into one side of the contactor. So if I put the black and red wire right here, they come from the disconnect. If I, if I put my two leads on the two screws here, as you can see, I got 245 volts. And then power goes through the contactor and comes out the other side to power up the compressor and the fan. And what interrupts this is this little plunger right here. Right now I won't have any voltage because my AC is off, but your contactor coil contacts are right here on either end, where the blue wire goes to and where the yellow wire goes to. So initially, there's power at the control board in your furnace or your air handler. That will send power to your thermostat. And when your thermostat is calling for cooling, or if you set it for AC, that will close the switch in the thermostat and send power back down to the control board. And then the control board will send power out to your AC unit out here. That will be your low voltage, the 24 volts. So briefly, let's just look inside here again. So the thermostat wire that comes into my unit, this brown wire, usually it'll have two wires inside of it, a red and a white. As you can see, the red ties in with the wire nut into the blue wire. And my blue wire is that wire right there going to the contactor coil on one side. But my white wire coming out of the thermostat wire goes into another red thermostat wire and then goes into this white insulator wire right here, which goes back out into my power saver switch right here. So really what that is, is basically this power saver switch is in series with my contactor coil. Sometimes ACs will have nothing in series with the contactor coil. That just means that the red and white wire will go straight to the contactor. Whereas in my case, it goes into the white wire, goes through that power saver switch, and then comes back out, goes into this wire nut, turns into this yellow wire, and goes on the other side of the contactor. All right, so reason number one why your contactor plunger may not be pulling in is because your furnace power switch is off. Maybe you were changing the filter and it got bumped off, or maybe some kids were playing around and turned it off. In fact, while I'm on that topic, if the inside fan inside your house, if the blower motor is not working, then you should put the contactor on hold and go figure out why your fan's not working first before you deal with the contactor. If your furnace is not getting power, if that power switch is off, that means that control board's not getting power, therefore it's not gonna send anything outside to the contactor. And reason number two is a condensate overflow switch, especially if you live in Florida. That seems to be a common problem there. Or if you have an attic unit, those will almost all the time have a condensate overflow switch. So that thing will basically interrupt the power going out to your contactor if your drain line is plugged and the water is backing up. That float switch, will, the water will go up and trip the switch and kill the power to it. That way you don't have water overflowing and damaging your ceilings and everything. So if you have a condensate overflow switch, check that out and make sure your drain is not plugged up. And number three is a bad thermostat or a thermostat working incorrectly. Now I say working incorrectly because perhaps it could just be dead or weak batteries. When batteries are weak, your display will still be on and that low battery symbol will not always appear. So the display will be on, but the batteries don't have enough power to close the switch to make a call for cooling. So if your thermostat has batteries, try replacing those. Another thing I've seen is the connectors behind there are loose or sometimes a wire is just broken off altogether. So pull your thermostat off the wall and just try gently tugging on each wire and make sure that each one of them is making a good connection. And if you have recently replaced your thermostat and you have an R and a RC pin, make sure you have a jumper between R and RC. 
because R means power and RC means power for cooling. So if you don't have a jumper between the two, you have no power for cooling. And of course, the thermostat could just simply be bad. And an easy way to find out if it's bad or not is just to bypass it either at the thermostat or at the control board. I think the best if you're trying to find out if the thermostat is bad or not is to bypass it at the thermostat by putting a little jumper between R and Y. If it kicks on, you know the thermostat is the problem. If it doesn't, then there's something else going on. And I have a video of how to bypass the thermostat and how to bypass the thermostat at the control board in my AC fixing playlist. So if you want, check those out. And reason number four is bad wiring. And what I mean by that is bad wire connectors, bare wires, corroded wires, broken or melted wires. So investigate all your wires, especially the low voltage, uh, you know, like the thermostat wires that I showed you in the beginning of the video. Look at all those for any breaks or bare spots. Then go inside at the furnace where the control board is, where those thermostat wires go into it. Check all of them out, make sure there's nothing broken. And while you're at the control board, take out that 3 amp fuse, make sure that thing's not blown. If your 3 amp fuse is blown, replace it. But before you do, usually those 3 amp fuses blow because there's a short somewhere. So investigate your wires before replacing a blown fuse. This AC season, I had two special cases. One was where a dog actually chewed through the thermostat wire outside. And another one, the customer was going around with a weed whacker and didn't even notice that he had chopped his thermostat wire in half. So of course nothing was working. But anyways, do investigate your thermostat wires outside and inside for any kind of damages. And reason number five is a bad five minute delay board. Now my unit does not have that on here, so I can't show you it, but it's just a little, either a black box or a little control board at your outside unit. Basically what that does is prevent your AC unit from short cycling. Like if you have a power outage or something like that, your AC unit, if it turns off, that thing will prevent it from turning right back on right away. Or if somebody's playing with a thermostat inside the house, it won't let you turn the AC on and off, on and off, because that's bad for the compressor. But sometimes that board goes bad, so power goes into it, because it's in series with the contactor, but it never comes back out to energize that contactor coil and pull it in. If it's just a simple board, what you can do is just take it out of the circuit, so the thermostat wires coming from inside the house, just route those straight to your contactor coil. Turn your AC back on, and if it turns on and everything works great, then you know that that board was the problem. And reason number six is a bad control board in the furnace or your air handler, or maybe it's a fan relay. Maybe there's a burnt out spot or there's a relay in there that went bad, but if it's not sending power to the outdoor unit, an easy way to check that is to take your meter, set it to voltage, and with your leads at the furnace control board, with the power on, check between Y and C. You should have 27 volts going outside. If you don't have 27 volts going outside, then there's a problem inside, either with the control board or with that thermostat. And I have separate videos of how to troubleshoot both of those. And while I'm talking about that, another easy way to check that is take your two meter leads, set it to voltage, and then your thermostat wire that comes out of the house and into your unit, the brown wire that has the red and the white wire, Put your meter leads on the red and the white. If it has 27 volts coming out, that means whatever is interrupting your power, the low voltage, is gonna be outside. If you don't have 27 volts or 24 volts, that means the problem is inside the house. So if you have voltage out here, problems out here. No voltage out here, problems inside. And reason number seven is a bad power saver switch. This box right here, not all houses have this, but if you do, generally it'll be buyer disconnect. And what that does is, on really hot days, the electric company cycles people on and off sporadically, so not everybody is running their AC at the same time, and they give you like 10 or 15 bucks off a month for doing that. But sometimes this power saver switch can become defective, so power goes into it, but it never comes back out to your contactor. If you think the power saver switch is your issue, I have a video specifically just for the power saver switch, how you can bypass to check if that's your problem or not, and then call the electric company and have them fix their box. And reason number eight is a tripped high pressure switch or a low pressure switch, or maybe they could be bad too. If you're not sure what I'm talking about, an easy way to see if you have one or not, one is to look at your wiring diagram on the back of your door, and two is to just look on top of your unit and you have two refrigerant pipes going out of your compressor. One is thick, one is thin. See if there's anything attached to those pipes if you look from the top. The low pressure switch is gonna be mounted to your thicker pipe and then the high pressure switch will be mounted to the discharge line or the thinner pipe. They usually look like black cylinders or a black disc with two wires coming out of it. 
and their function is to interrupt the power if your refrigerant pressures or freon pressures are either too high or too low in the system. A lot of times the high pressure switch on the thin line will be resettable. It'll have a little red button on it. You can press that and if it presses in, you hear a click. That means that was tripped and you just reset it and your AC will start working normally. But that also means that your pressures for some reason got too high. A lot of times the reason for that is because your condenser coil is dirty. So even if it looks clean, I would hose it down and spray it down, make sure it's clean. And if it looks dirty, well then of course it's dirty. As for the low pressure switch, if that's tripped, those are usually not resettable. That just means your refrigerant levels are very low. Oftentimes when those are tripping, your unit will turn on and it'll run for a little bit and then turn back off. Turn back on, run for a little bit, turn back off. If the low pressure trip is switched and it's not resetting automatically, that means your freon pressures are very low. To check that, you can either disconnect the wires and ohm it out for resistance. You can check voltage to see if you have voltage coming in and voltage coming out. Or you can bypass it and see if the unit will turn on without it. But that is of course just for testing purposes, you do not want to leave it bypassed. Because there's a reason why it tripped in the first place. But once in a while, the high pressure switch or low pressure switch are just simply bad. I don't have those too often, but once in a while I'll come across a high pressure switch for example that's just stuck open and it will not close, but when I check the pressures of the Freon, everything is good. In that case, you just need to replace that high pressure switch and you'll be good to go. But anyway, I'm spending a little too much time on the pressure switches. Those tend to be a little bit more complicated. You might be better off calling a tech at that point. And reason number nine why your contactor might not be pulling in is a bad contactor itself. Now to check that is pretty easy. All you gotta do is set your meter to voltage and put your meter leads on either end of the contactor coil where that yellow wire and blue wire came in and mine and see if you have 27 volts there. If there's voltage going to the contactor yet that little plunger is not pulling in that means you have a bad contactor coil. You could also disconnect the wires and check for resistance. If it's OL it's bad as well. And another thing I should mention especially if you're down south in like Texas and Arizona make sure you check if your contactor contacts have any bugs or ants inside of them because they could be preventing that plunger from pulling in. And reason number 10 and the final reason is a bad transformer. Not a lot of air conditioners will have a transformer or at least in Minnesota they don't. I don't know maybe some other states have a lot of them but if your unit has a transformer there's a chance that that's bad as well and that's what's causing that. To check if your transformer is bad you would just have to look up a video on how to ohm out a transformer on the resistance and just see if you have the right readings. If you have OL or open line instead of a reading, well then you know for sure that your transformer is bad. But if you have a burnt out transformer, make sure you replace your contactor first because your contactor may have been the reason why your transformer burned out. So if you have a bad transformer, replace both the contactor and the transformer and you should be good to go. And that covers just about all of them. I did not cover anything about communicating systems because that's like a whole nother beast you're better off calling a technician at that point. What I mean by communicating systems is instead of like your normal thermostat terminal strip on your thermostat and control board and outside, like the G, the R, the W, the Y, all you're gonna have is a green little Molex plug that says A, B, C, D. Those are harder to troubleshoot and diagnose so yeah, like I was saying, you're better off just calling a technician at that point if you have that kind of system. Well guys, and those were the 10 reasons why your contactor might not be pulling in. I hope you found this video useful. If you have something to add or if you have some reasons that I missed, please do so in the comments below so everybody else can learn from that as well. A lot of times the best part of the video is the commentary below. So make sure you check that out. Thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to mash that like button on the way out and we'll see you next time.